We're gonna go into all the key factors behind competing as a shot putter or discus thrower, or hammer thrower or a javelin thrower. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from throwsuniversity.com. And if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning about throwing, you wanna learn how you can compete you want to become the best thrower possible, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you drop some bombs. Throwers go to meets all the time and they have these big grand visions. They're gonna PR by a meter. They're gonna drop these monster bombs. And what ends up happening is we take that first throw and all of a sudden you don't feel that good. Your warmups don't feel that good. Somebody stepped in front of you in the warm up line. Someone's talking too much. The circle's a little bit slippery. The circle's a little slow. You feel something on your shot that shouldn't be there. There's a little nick. Your, your shot's not taking chalk like it normally does. You didn't time your coffee perfectly. Maybe you didn't have your pre-workout at the exact right time. Better yet, your playlist on your phone isn't playing the songs the exact way that you want. These are all scenarios that every throws coach hears. We always hear every single story behind why our throwers haven't thrown what we want them to throw or why they didn't compete the way they believed they could have competed. It always is this long drawn out story. Well, Dane, the moon didn't line up with the third moon from Venus on this exact moment. And so I was thrown off inside the circle. And this is actually, well, that story wasn't real, but a lot of these stories are real, right? There's a lot of problems with throwers who tend to struggle with competing. And so we've got to think about, it. there's got to be different things that we can do. And that first thing that I always like to think about is icons, okay? So what does that mean? If we can think about icons in the sense from a religious perspective, let's say physical gear. So if we can sit there and when we're talking about preparing for a competition, let's make everything as minimally stressful as possible. And that's what comes into creating a training environment that is then relatable to competition. So how can we make that competition as similar to our training as possible? And that first step is to minimize any stress. So you gotta sit there and say, all right, physically, what's my lucky underwear? What shoes do I wanna have if it's raining? What shoes do I wanna have if it's not raining? What shoes do I wanna have if the circle's slippery? What gear do I wanna wear? What gear do I wanna wear in warm-ups? So I used to sit there and say, hey, I wanna be wearing a cool band t-shirt before I go warm up. I used to wear a Led Zeppelin t-shirt way back in the day, back in 2001, 2002. I'd warm up with a Led Zeppelin t-shirt on because I thought I was cool if I would wear some classic rock band before I would take some throws and that's okay. But that was part of those icons. That was part of that physical gear. What are your lucky socks? What wrist straps do you want to have on? Maybe what headband do you want to have on? Now you lay that all out ahead of time and you know exactly what you're going to wear, what you're going to feel like, what you want to look like, what you want to feel in a circle through your feet, what shorts you want to have on, what spandex you want to have on. And on top of that, you can have backup stuff planned out and that's going to help making competing a little bit more familiar and a little bit less stressful. And that's gonna lead us into that next key factor. And that's gonna be rituals. So we're gonna stick with this religious theme, right? So we got the icons and we got rituals. So what are our rituals gonna be? I wanna know if from all of my throwers, what are they gonna do two hours out? What are they gonna do three hours out? What kind of music are they gonna listen to to keep their heart rate down? What is that ritual that they can go through for every single meet to get them into that mindset, to get them into the zone? You can look at any great competitor and they have rituals established. And so this entails, okay, what are you gonna do two hours out? What are you gonna do an hour out? What are you gonna do a half hour out? Are you gonna do a dynamic warm up with skipping? Are you gonna just do a little jog? Are you not gonna do anything? Are you just gonna do some air squats, some lunges? anything along those lines, but you plan it out specifically. Hey, I got 10 minutes, I'm gonna do walking lunges, I'm gonna do some step ups, I'm gonna do some jump squats, anything along these lines, that's gonna be part of my warm up. I'm gonna do some rotational stretches. That's written down ahead of time and you're planned out. When are you gonna take your pre-workout? When are you gonna take your caffeine? It's 30 minutes ahead of time. I wanna get that caffeine in my bloodstream. I wanna metabolize it and really start to feel amped up. That's planned out. Now we get into the throws. What? throws are we going to do? How many standing throws are we going to take? How many half turns are we going to take? How many non reverses are we going to take? How many full throws are we going to take? And I recommend when it comes down to it, practice this 
routine, practice this ritual. So if you're at practice, you might sit there and say, hey, at States or at the NCAA championship or at the world championship, we might only get two warmups. We might only get three warmups. So let's take a stand. Let's take two nons right away. Or maybe it is world championships and you only get two warmup throws. All right. Well, we're gonna do a whole bunch of dry spins. If we're a shot putter, we're gonna do some shot flicks into the ground, and then we're gonna hold that shot and we're gonna do some rotational work, some rotational air drills. And then that way, when we get into the circle, we got those two full throws and we're gonna go ham, okay? So it's establishing that ritual, and that might mean, again, two standing throws, one non-reverse, one full throw. Now, that ritual also factors into What's the in-competition ritual? What are you gonna do on that first throw? And that's where I recommend first throw, 80%. Okay, take that throw at 80% and then you adapt. If you take that throw at 80%, you get a good solid mark, now you're going ham. Take the next two throws to go drop a bomb. If you don't drop a bomb, you make that audible. Third throw, it's the audible. You go, all right, well, first two throws went well. Third throw, I'm gonna try and go ham. I fouled you know, that third throw. Now what do we do on that fourth throw? We make a technical correction and then we try and go ham on five and six. But it's having that plan. Throw one is a ritual, 80%. In practice, you do the same thing. You do the same warm up. You take caffeine at the same time. You do the same warm up with the throws. Then that first throw, you have a mock me, 80%. Then you get a decent mark. Maybe you don't get a decent mark. Well, now you gotta do another little bit higher intensity on that second throw and you practice it, but it becomes a ritual and it's gonna help you prepare for that competition setting. That's gonna take us into that third key factor, which I refer to as that mantra, right? What is it that you can say to yourself to just flip the switch? We think back to the days of Adam Nelson where he would go out into the sector, he would do all this crazy stuff, and then it was all of a sudden, everything shut down and he just walked in, he zoned out, and he went off, right? And you can see that with today's great throwers. You can see Krauser just sort of changes the way he approaches his throw when he's outside the circle, it's like his face completely changes when he steps into the circle. Watch Michelle Carter in 2016. Every single throw, she's just mumbling. She's just going inside of her head. And that's what's great, headspace. Where is your headspace, okay? That's what that mantra comes into play. Let's pretend it's Dane Miller. I'm Dane Miller, I'm a beast, and I'm gonna drop a bomb on this throw. That's my mantra, right? Whatever it is that you're choosing, you get in and you repeat it, and you repeat it over and over and over and over again. It's just like a Hail Mary if you're a Catholic. It's the same, similar idea. You constantly remind yourself through this mantra, who you are and what your goals are for that competition setting and you say it over and over and over again and then that triggers your mindset and your outlook to block out all distractions to block out all stress and focus on the here and now and the here and now is getting into the circle and dropping that big bomb okay so you've got to establish that ahead of time and you establish what that mantra is you practice it and you repeat it over and over again, and your mantra should line up with your goals. Then you take that mantra, you establish that into a ritual. Now you practice that, you have a mock meet. You practice that at little high school meets, or if you're a post-collegiate thrower and you've got smaller meets at various colleges, you can practice that. And then on top of that, you plan ahead, you lay out those icons, the physical gear ahead of time, and now you have all of this stuff lined up. You know exactly what that ritual is gonna be on comp day. Every single thing is lined up, and then when something does pop up, you're able to audible, like I said, and make changes, but it's not going to be stressful. And what ends up happening is it makes competition much more enjoyable, and that is exactly what's gonna to lead to those monster bombs. So if you need help with a peak program and you want something that's gonna help you lead to this big increase in your competition throws, Click on the link down below, head over to throwsuniversity.com and pick up our peak program. If you want more content around throws-based competing, click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.